I guess without further ado, I would, it gives me great pleasure to relinquish one of Pittsburgh's, the stage to one of Pittsburgh's best, uh, well, cheerleaders and spokespeople, um, our mayor, Bill Peduto. Bill, come and rescue me from this. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, good, good to, to see, see you. you. Yeah. All right, have you're, fun. You're okay? You're leaving. What's that? You're leaving. This stage is only big enough for okay. Well, here, listen, you, when you're backstage, you won't hear a word I say. Because I'll be here. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All right. Good morning, people. All right. Who's ready to change the future? Let's see, show hands. You saw that film that Andre showed us, right? And there were so many people that got around it and believed with their hearts that it was the right thing that Pittsburgh needed. And now we are dealing with the consequences. Because what it did is it separated us, it created greater disparity, and it created a system where our entire downtown and most of our city was designed for the car, not the person. So our job, collectively, is to come up with a plan that sort of puts all of the pieces back. We're chasing Davy Lawrence's ghost, right? And part of that means that we have to start to recognize neighborhoods as neighborhoods and empower them to be able to push forward their own plans and then get the community behind it. And I mean the greater community, not just that neighborhood, to actually make it happen. And so we can do this. We have been through floods, fires. This city burnt down well before we were burning bridges, which I still don't understand how you burn steel. We have been through great disparity between the haves and the have-nots. We have had air that was dangerous to breathe, and we still have air problems that we need to address. We've had water that was poisonous to drink, and we still have water issues that we have to address. But we've been able to do it as Pittsburghers, which means we roll up our sleeves, we work together, and we solve it. So, 10 years ago, biggest issue, how do we keep young people here? How do we create an economy and bring people back? How do we make people want to live in the city and not move out to the suburbs? Done, done, done. Young people are not only staying here, young people are moving in from around the country, people are moving in from the suburbs to the city, and we're faced with the new challenge. Our challenge is, how do we keep Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, because even in those darkest days in the 1980s, we knew there was something magical about this place. And we don't want to see it lost with growth. And then how do we make it a Pittsburgh for all? How do we make sure at the very, very beginning that the policies that we're going to push and pursue of those tax dollars, those limited tax dollars that we have, when they get put into a project, it's not just a benefit for the developer, but it benefits people, planet, place, and yes, it performs so that they're going to want to invest in our city. And then, how do we make it so it's the law? So that it doesn't matter who's the mayor or who's on council, but for these next 10 to 20 years, we bake in all of those things at the beginning of the process and not wait 50 years later to try to solve them. This place is very, very special. And people who visit from around the country and around the world will tell you this. Sometimes we forget because we live here every day. But we have something incredibly special. And we have been able to tackle the biggest issues by working together. Andre's family has 150 years of being civic leaders in this town, and they're still here because they get it. We have this opportunity, and it's not going to come again. This opportunity is once in four generations. And it's the opportunity to define what we, we, want Pittsburgh to be. We're small enough, we can do it. We're large enough that the world will take notice. 
So, we got some work to do today. Roll up your sleeves and do what Pittsburghers do. We work hard and we innovate. And let the rest of the world follow because we're back and we're gonna build a city that keeps Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, and makes it a Pittsburgh for all. So let me show you a short video, three minutes, that sort of explains that and talks about how all these changes in technology in our industry are putting us at that forefront of building a Pittsburgh for all. Chances are you've heard some things about us. We're the ones who shoveled iron ore into the blast furnaces and ran our street lights during the day. We did the unglamorous work that helped build the nation, and we've got the scars to prove it. Sure, we've got a reputation. The way we see it, we've got a reputation to uphold. Yeah, steel will always be a part of our identity, but really, it's innovation that's in our DNA. From steamboats to glass to steel to aluminum, Pittsburgh was always at the forefront of innovation. We created the modern highway system. We powered the first nuclear submarine. When the steel industry famously turned our city into hell with the lid off, we set about to clean up, instituting the first clean air regulations of their kind. We know a thing or two about looking challenges in the eye and seeing opportunities. Hills, rivers and valleys forced our 55 square miles into an unruly tangle of roads and bridges. Out of that grew 90 distinct neighborhoods. Some have prospered with the city's ups and downs. Others haven't had a seat at the table. In the past, progress for some meant decline for others. As city residents fled to the suburbs, we cut highways through the hearts of vibrant communities, leaving large swaths of our diverse population isolated. Maybe there were times we forgot what we stood for, but we always come back stronger. We're still creating industries, but this time around we're using 21st century technology and engineering to get us there. Universities, nonprofits, and businesses are working together to build robots, cure diseases, and design better products. And we're just getting started. With Smart PGH, we're at the cusp of the next revolution in transportation and information technology that has the potential to have huge impacts on the way we live. We're deploying the most advanced traffic signals in the world to move people, bikes, and vehicles both faster and safer. These signals actually learn, and they're made right here at home. We're rolling out smart streetlights with sensors that communicate with traffic and even monitor air quality. We're building new infrastructure for autonomous and electric vehicles and charging them without fossil fuels. And this time, we're putting people first, training our residents for the jobs of the future, and working on the ground in every neighborhood to make certain these technologies are actually making people's lives better. Smart PGH isn't simply our next project. It's our next chance. A chance to chart a course, to bridge the gaps between ourselves. A chance to be the blueprint for other cities like us. We're thinkers and doers. It's what's allowed us to bounce back, to shake off the rust and keep moving. Our hardworking ethic, our spirit of innovation, those aren't going anywhere. But this time around, we've made the decision, if it's not for all, it's not for us. All right. Here's the deal, guys. First off, thank you to Andre Hines and the Hines Endowments for being able to bring us all together. Let's use this opportunity to strike and make sure that what we bring out of these discussions is the blueprint for the future of Pittsburgh.